Miss over Carcassonne. This is a set for Carcassonne, which brings cooperative gaming, co cooperative gameplay to the beloved uh, Carcassonne family of games at this point. And Miss over Carcassonne works both as a standalone game and also as an expansion to Carcassonne. Now, I only played it as a standalone game and I also played it only solitaire because you can do that. It's fully cooperative and you can play multiplayer or solo. The only difference really is that uh, when you're playing multiplayer you will receive five meeples of a color. When you play solo you will receive uh, uh, three meeples of, of four different colors and you will use the unclaimed color, an unclaimed color for scoring purposes. So as solo you will have 12 meeples in four different colors which makes for a very pretty very pretty pool of things. Meeples! Uh, meeples now have a flamethrower so we can totally repurpose them for fan made uh, for a fan made Carcassonne the Thing expansion which I hope will come at some point. And they need those torches to bring some light to the scary misty world of uh, of Carcassonne, uh, the Miss of Carcassonne, because now we got ghosts. And I'm filming this in September, so this is very timely, just in time for the Halloween season. Now we can play Carcassonne with scary ghosts that will try to ruin things. You place a tile in the middle, the starting tile in the middle of the table to start the game. Uh, you place ghosts on it. As you can see, there are mist banks and also there are icons representing ghosts. And usually you will place a ghost on an icon representing a ghost because it just makes sense. It also makes sense if you place them down this way because this way you don't fall. But I don't because I love to see little scary ghosts standing there. Then I just need to be super careful. That's my personal choice. Then, the game, uh, then you need to choose the scenario or better the level that you're going to play. There are six different modes of play, slash levels, slash scenarios, and they are an increasing level of complexity and difficulty from level one to level six. And so you have pretty significant replay value here. The general idea, however, across all scenarios is that you have a number of victory points that you need to score and you will set this token on the track based on the scenario that you're playing and therefore based on the number of points that you need to win. And if you reach the number of points, good for you, you win the game. Based on the scenario, there may also be these tokens that go on the track at specific places. I'm placing them randomly right now. You will divide the tiles that you need to play into three stacks. And basically, if you're playing a scenario with the hounds, you need to have scored a certain amount of points by the time you deplete the first stack and the other amount of points by the time you deplete the second and you always need to complete the uh, to reach the amount of points by the time you deplete the third stack. So in scenarios that have the hounds you will have a goal post that you need to meet during the game not just a big scoring goal at the end of the game. But hounds also once you reach that point and you collect the token they give you benefits. So there's a, there's a trade-off there. The general idea remains the same as in traditional Carcassonne that when it is your turn you draw a tile and you need to place it next to an adjacent, next to an already existing tile and so that all terrains match and so for example road with road that's a legal placement there is a road there also road with road or city with city for example like so. Um, or land with land. Now you see the mist, the, the, the mist do not, does not need to match. So for example, if I'm placing this edge, which is just land next to that one, it will be okay. However, once I place a new tile on the board, I need to place ghosts on each icon, ghost icon that is showing, unless, that would be the case, unless by placing the new tile, I'm extending a mist bank, in which case the number of ghosts that I need to place is reduced by one. So if I'm placing that tile there, there's only one ghost, one minus one is zero. I don't have to place that 
to place anything there. So there is an incentive in trying to expand the mist, the mist banks. Also, if you manage to surround, to complete a, a bank, uh, a mist bank entirely, then you get to remove the ghosts that are in there. The idea is that the ghosts are like the disease in pandemic, too many of them on the board, you lose the game. If you would need to place a ghost on the board and you can't, then you lose the game. Suppose, for example, I place that one there, that's not so good because I need to add three ghosts there and I don't get the bonus for extending a mist bank but that would work then I only need to place two instead of three but I'm already starting to mess things up in that in that case in that scenario but suppose I do it that way or no Suppose that earlier I'd done that, yeah, we need to place a ghost there, but then I place this one, it still doesn't look great. But I'm just showing you, I'm not playing well, differently from when I'm playing the game, in which I also not super good. But that's the general, that's the general idea, yay, no new ghosts. Now, when you place a new tile again, you may have to play ghosts, because there are ghosts on the thing, and maybe you don't have the bonus. You can also choose to place a meeple, and you can choose to place a meeple on a road, or on a city, or the tile that you just placed. And just like in Carcassonne, a traditional, you will get to score a road on a sea or a city when it is completed. Now here is the the plot twist. When you are scoring say a completed road, uh, you pick up the corresponding meeple, it is removed from the board, you score points or do you? Every time that you score, you can choose to add points to your board, which you need to win the game, or instead of doing that, instead of collecting the points, you can choose to remove up to three ghosts from a single tile. So you need points to win the game, and you need to get rid of these ghosts not to lose the game. So that's an interesting plot twist there. And that's really the general idea that you have here. Then the different scenarios also offer, as we saw, different things such as uh, intermediate goals that you need to fulfill, tasks such as the cemetery that will force you to add extra goals to, to the board uh, until you surround it, in which case you bury a meeple that is out of the game, but you also get to remove all the goals that were there castles uh, if I can find them there you go will give you extra way of scoring points if you surround them so this is the general idea variants uh, six variants of the idea of place a tile making sure the edges match possibly a ghost possibly add meeples possibly score and take the scoring bonus or the outcome of scoring in the forms of points or removing ghosts. This is in essence how you play Mist over Carcassonne. I'm not gonna go over all scenarios because it would be too fiddly, but again, this is the general idea. It is a universal truth that any game which is already good when it is competitive and non-solo friendly becomes even better when it's competitive and solo friendly. That's a self-evident fact. And I have a friend who already used to play Carcassonne solo. He just puts together all the expansions that he has and he just plays and creates a ginormous tableau and finds that very relaxing. But now we have an official way of playing Carcassonne uh, solo slash cooperative and I like it. I like it a lot. I definitely enjoy the challenges, the difficulties. The, uh, the general idea is pandemic-like, which is perfectly fine. It's a macro category of games in which you do something and the board, you need to add something which is undesirable to the board and you need to manage that and keep that at bay while at the same time try to fulfill the betray conditions of the game. So I'd say this is part of the pandemic lineage of solo friendly slash cooperative games that we have seen in the last 15 years or so. And it's good. It's a really good implementation. Actually, I'm very, I'm very pleased with how seamless and smooth the gameplay is. How you don't have to worry about uh, a lot of fiddliness, uh, different things to add. No, it's always ghosts, but the number of ghosts that you can place uh, will depend on the placement of the tile. And so you're constantly there managing these mutually, often mutually exclusive objectives of I need not to lose, 
right now, because of the ghosts, but I also need to win, meaning I need not to lose because I don't score enough points. It seems obvious, uh, well, if I'm not scoring much anyways in that specific instance, it's a small city, for example, then I'm gonna use it to remove ghosts. But that's not always the case. Maybe my ghosts are kind of spread out and this is the nice style from which I can remove three ghosts. Or there is a really big thing that I wanted to score for a long time, but I'm losing the game, and so now I'm considering whether I should sacrifice the good scoring opportunity for staying in the game. Or I risk it, and maybe I'm lucky, the next style doesn't have ghosts, but allows me to, or because of the bank, I can, I don't have to add ghosts, and I can then score something else and remove ghosts that way. Lot of interesting, tough, tight decisions there emerging from uh, from such a simple idea, which is add a tile and possibly add some ghosts and try to have not too many ghosts out there. As a solo game, I found it works perfectly. As a cooperative game, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I'm not in any rush to play cooperatively because I enjoy the solo, so why? And I have other games, you know, purely non-solo friendly to play at game night. I'm just a bit worried because there's no hidden information, uh, there's no mitigation for the danger of alpha playing slash quarterbacking, somebody trying to advise other people too much, there's no mitigation for um, uh, for downtime because one, while other people are playing their turn, there's nothing for you to do other than possibly advising them and actually that may even incur the quarterbacking problem. Solo game is always you. So if you find that this kind of game, uh, sequential, no hidden information, yet copy works with your group and your crowd, Good for you, but I want to advise, I want to warn you that there is the possibility this may not work in every single group. Another thing that is interesting is that I found it challenging to find of the six scenarios the one that is just right, probably, probably around like in terms of difficulty, probably around scenario like two or three that's the ones that I enjoyed the most. One is an introduction, doesn't use all the tiles, doesn't use the cemeteries and the castles, for example. And I think that the cemeteries do add a nice level of challenge as they keep sucking up and creating more ghosts. And you, and you pacify them by burying somebody there. It's interesting, perfectly Halloween-ish idea. Um, so level 2 and level 3 use all the tiles, but they don't use too many other things. And in particular, they're not impossible. Uh, I find that the difficulty ramps up, not linearly, but it really takes off after level 3. It's not that I have never won those levels, I didn't even get remotely close to winning or to not losing early on. But again, if you like a tough challenge, then you got those, you got those. And frankly, just uh, if I were to only play level two or level three, I'd be perfectly happy. You know, a game, I need only one level, I need the game to be good. And even if I only played those two, then I got two variants of a game that I like very much because this is ultimately the most important thing. Cooperative slash solo friendly Carcassonne is simple, is smooth, plays well, it looks really neat. Uh, high production values as we have come to expect from the Carcassonne family of games. So I'm happy I had a good time playing the game and I highly recommend it to anybody who is already a fan of Carcassonne and or somebody who is looking for a simple yet engaging solitaire game and possibly cooperative game with the warnings and disclaimers that I gave you earlier.